Like any TCG, not all cards in Flesh and Blood are created equally. Some are made to be incredibly strong, while others feel like mere pack filler, like most Yellow Pitch cards. And while what differentiates a good card from a bad card might not be immediately obvious, for some cards, it absolutely is. Today, I want to talk about why no one plays the absolute stinker of a rare from Monarch, Rise Above. Defense Reactions are a very powerful card type in Flesh and Blood, being the only thing aside from instants that can be played after attack reactions, and also being the only cards that can defend from the arsenal. And while there are many different defense reactions to choose from, what heroes are popular in the current meta is what typically determines which ones people play. But Rise Above has seen approximately zero play because quite frankly, it's, it's a pretty bad card. <laughs> now, before I get into it, I just want to note that while it does come in a cycle, I'm going to be analyzing the red copy of Rise Above, as this is by far and away the most powerful version of the card. Mind you, not that that's really saying much. This generic defense reaction can pitch for one, costs two to play, and defends for four. However, it also has the ability to bypass its own resource requirements at the cost of putting a card from your hand on top of the deck. Now, ignoring that ability for just a moment, two resource for four defense value is an awful rate when the average is zero for four and not just four defense reactions. And while at first you might think that the ability makes the card free, it doesn't. At best, you put a red card on top of your deck, effectively meaning that this costs one to play. But again, when zero for four is the baseline, one for four is also still a bad rate. However, let's look at that ability for a second. There are heroes in the game, like Kano and Dromai, that do care about what the top card of the deck is, and so you might think that this card could be playable there. Except it's not, because by putting a card back, not only are you losing card advantage, but you can only choose from cards in your hand. So if you don't have any that you actually want to play from off the top of your deck, then you're just screwed. Not only that, but why can you only put cards back on top? Why couldn't it be top or bottom? At least then you could filter cards from your hand that you don't need. And Rise Above only gets worse when you compare it to the two most popular defense reactions, Sink Below and Fate Foreseen. Both of these cards are generic zero for fours and both of them let you actually filter your hand and deck. Sink Below lets you tuck a card and draw another and Fate Foreseen lets you opt one. So not only are these cards free to play, but they actually have beneficial abilities. Rise above, in all practicality, just sets you behind because the cards you put on top is usually just going to be drawn again at the end of your next turn. And let's also look at other defense reactions. Unmovable costs three, but blocks for seven or eight. Steel Blade Shunt is a one for six that can potentially damage your opponent. And that all you got comes only as a yellow and is a zero for three, but with the added ability that if you block an attack that has only two or less power, then you get to draw a card when the combat chain closes, effectively letting you block up to two damage for free. No matter which way you slice, it, Rise Above is a really bad card to play. Having an upside that's really a downside is awful when the card only blocks for four. And while I do think we will continue to get heroes that care about the top card of the deck, I do not see why anyone would play this over a card like Fate Foreseen. It's rather unfortunate that this card is as bad as it is, because the art on it is really, really gorgeous and it plays off of the art on Sync Below. However, unlike Sync, Rise Above will forever remain a card that just stinks. Huge thank you to all of my supporters. If you'd like to join the Chad Army, you can either become a channel member or join my Patreon with the link in the description. And if it's cards you want, you can use my affiliate link to Red Riot Games to help support me as well.